Peace. What it was, what it is, what it will be. Urban Monk in the temple. You want to join me here? All you got to do is hit the subscribe button, man. You can like, you can unlike, and you can leave a comment. But once you hit that button, you become a part of the family. Become a subscriber and become a monk. And if you have any requests, suggestions, or information regarding any of the groups that we review here, all you got to do is hit me up at templeofthemonk at gmail.com. That's monk with the Q. Temple of the Monk at gmail.com. That's monk with the Q. We're about to get into NCT's Kick It. This is a revisit, man. You want to be here for this. I'm telling you. Come on. You ready? I'm ready. Kaja. So we're about to dig into NCT's Kick It. This is 127 now because I know they're a subgroup. So NCT 127's Kick It is a video that I've seen already. I'm not going to cheat you into believing that this is some kind of reaction or review that I just saw. So I'm amazed by it. But I do have to tell you, I've only seen this video when it first came out, which was, I believe, a couple of months ago, maybe less than that. The problem was somehow I got taken down. And that's because your man Monk crunched everything into one video. So one of those videos and i believe there's a lyric there's an mv there's a dance practice and there's a mirrored version of two versions of a dance performance i guess that's the way you want to put it and i believe there's also a stage there's a lot of versions of this so because i like to give you all that i possibly can from any group that i possibly do i put them all in one video saying hey you know what let's not break this up but it got blocked I don't know which video it was. Um, it was either one of the performance videos or the stage. It was one of the two. In any case, this time I'm going to revisit it because I haven't seen it in a while and it was the banger. This is very well going to be another treat and who, I might I might see some things that I didn't see last time. That's what happens. Usually if I see it once, I miss a lot of stuff. So this might be a time, a good time to revisit it. Um, I've been asking, am I going to do an album listen? That could be possible. It could be possible. I did it with EXO's Obsession. It could be possible with this too. Matter of fact, it could be very possible. So be looking for that, but just be patient, okay? Um, all right, so we're going to dig into the lyric video first. We'll then go into the MV and then the dance practice for this particular revisit. When I do the other revisit, we're going to do that separately. That's with the dance uh, stage performances and the dance performances just in case. Now, if anything then goes wrong, it will be uploaded into the website. And you guys know where to go to the website, right? You know you have to sign up because we have the forums down there, right? And you know if you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon link down there also. So don't forget that. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. Kick it by NCT 127. Yeah, man, Monk. I'm ready to do it. Yeah, let me introduce you to some new deals. New deals. New deals. Bass kick swinging like a Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Hey yo, Bruce Lee. You want to shoot me, shoot me, shoot me, boy? You want Neil? You know you want Neil. You move your head. Not a brutal chiller, Joe. Fighting for 
So I got, I, I usually don't stop in the middle of the lyric video. I usually wait, but this is, I'm, mind you, I'm reading and I'm listening to voices and anybody that knows Monk knows that I love, well, I gotta be careful with my mic. You're making them weird noises. Anybody knows, if you know me, you know that there is a particular way that I love a bridge to be done. Um, and that's that jazzy bridge. I love it. I said it with Exos, um, what was that? Exos, not Wolf, what was it Wolf? I just, I just did the re I have so many re reviews in my head, I can't even think of, uh, <laughs> anyway, I did it with Exo, right? I did it with Exo songs, actually a few of them, and also a uh, Shiny joint. Shiny was very famous for throwing these very jazzy, layback lounge, low, lo-fi um, bridges and hooks into their songs that I like. This is one of them. This is one of those types of hooks that I like. Just the way that they do it. <laughs> One thing I gotta do also, do young. So that was Hei Chun Jung Woo, do young, tail. I know Mark is one of the rappers, and so is Tae Young. I know that. Tail, I'm not familiar. Actually, I'm not familiar with any of these guys other than Mark and Tae Young, but very, very, like I said, only familiar. Not very familiar, but familiar. Like I know who Tae Young is because I've seen a couple of his solos way back, like 217. For me, that's way back. 217, 18, 19, 20. So almost three years ago. Um, actually, yeah, because our anniversary, me and my wife's anniversary is coming up the 30th of this month. So yeah, it would have been almost exactly three years ago. Um, so yeah, I'm familiar. I got to get familiar with these, but listening to the voices, like a lot of these groups, man, they just have a very smooth sound. Before, when I first got into the K-pop, they kind of almost all sound the same to me. Not that their voices were bad, but now that I'm digging deeper more into these groups, and the individuals, I'm kind of getting the gist of what the, what the most, um, what, how do you call it, the most distinctive voices are in the groups, you know, as a, and, and then, you know, the other ones, so. Now, one thing I like, Mark and Young style, two different styles, which I'm always a fan of. When styles change up in a rap, that's important to me. As a rapper, that's important to me because you shouldn't be stuck on one style. To me, that's, I don't know, just my opinion. Like, again, I'm a rapper, so I can be very, I can be very critical when it comes to listening to rappers. And what, but one thing I love, because I know when I was learning to rap, I, thought, I always thought it was boring to do one particular style or cadence the entire song. The, I, and I used to do it. I used to do that. But it, when I listen back at it, I'd be like, oh, this is not going to work. Like, I'm bored of it. So that means everybody else is going to be bored of it or every other person is going to be bored of it also. So I got to do change-ups, man. There's got to be change-ups. Like, I got to learn to come in and out of the beat, off to the beat, to the beat, to the symbol, to the... Like, just different ways I can think of following the cadence of the music and then making my style according to how that music is. And then, 
in, ter- in, in time, you develop your own style. You start to make up stuff and to the point where you can write to any beat or even write and fit your song to the beat or have a producer fit the music around your rap. And I like the way Mark and Young came in because Young didn't sound anything like Mark. Mark came in with a nice little style and then Young up, like basically upgraded the style for with more of a, with a deeper, more detailed cadence, and I like that. And then the transition between Johnny and Tay Young was very dope because it was almost like I almost thought Johnny was about to throw a rap in, but it was like Tay Young finished his rap and then Johnny came in with like smooth like song into that, and it wasn't too much. It was just enough to like smoothly transition from Tay Young to Johnny. I like that. I just love this song, but I'm glad I'm revisiting it too. I'm kind of glad it got blocked. No, actually, no, I'm not glad it got blocked. <laughs> I just wish I did. I just wish I had the approach to the edit better. I, and that, but live and learn, right? You know what I mean? I know to separate it now, and I've learned that the hard way. And thank God that we had the website. My wife is just beautiful at coming up with these ideas. Hey, baby, you have the website. Why don't you put the videos up there and they can go there and watch it? It's like, oh. Good idea. I have this website sitting there for years from my radio show. Wasn't even using it. So it was a perfect opportunity to use it. Okay, let me stop talking. We are going to get into the MV next. And, um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. If my memory serves me correctly, this is a very dope MC. Uh, a de- very dope MC. <laughs> very dope MV. Yes, I'm a very dope MC. Um, very dope MV. And this time, I, last time I did this, I don't, rem- I don't even remember if I added the dance practice. So I did, in, this time I did put it in there. I put it in this lineup. And like, let me, let me make sure I got this correct. Yeah, it looks like there's like one, two, three, four. Uh, four videos. Actually, there should be five total. This is a side to lyric video. So, like I said, MV after this, and then the dance practice, the dance practice. Then I'm going to put the other three together. That includes the mashup of the two, because I think if I remember, there's a a beginning in a couple of them that are are not in the mashup. So I want to make sure I get the gist of everything that's going on. So we're not going to play that game and be lazy. Monk's not going to be lazy because I'm lazy and I miss out on things. Okay, so now we're going to get into the MV. So y'all know what's going down. We got another one to go. Yeah, I swear to God, it's like Christmas right now. 
right there i can't tell I, i'll be honest i told you guys how i am with the hairstyles and everything it can be confusing for me but i'm, I'm asking because taehyung is usually the one that stands out the most to me taehyung is like that g dragon is like that in big bang taemin is like that for me in shiny exo it's tau tau may be baekhyun um as far as stand out dio i just know it's something about his face he doesn't have he could change his hairstyle he could turn his hairstyle plaid i don't know who dio is but is, I can't, and I'm not very familiar with Taeyong's face. Although I've seen like one, maybe two of his videos. But I wonder if this is him because he, he to me, strikes me as the one that stands out the most. And he looks like the only one here. And last time, I remember last time, I, I stopped this video more times than I should have because of these outfits. <laughs> these outfits were so dope. I think there was only one where the pants were questionable because they remind me of like those raver pants with all the straps and stuff on them. And I was like, yeah, okay, that's cool, but not for me. But definitely I would rock pretty much any of these, any of these except for this one right here because your man doesn't have a six pack and I don't know if anybody would want to see my pregnant belly popping out of a sleepless jacket. So when I lived in Brooklyn, my dad's ex-girlfriend's daughter, who was much older than me at the time, I think I was only 14, took me down to the Brooklyn Navy Yard, right, where they were having a um, Green Beret cadet um, showcase, right? So the, you know, it's basically the younger cats, the, the ROTC cats, Green Berets. Um, they had them down there doing uh, rifle cadences. You know what I mean? Dance, uh, not dance, excuse me, you know, formations. And it looked just like that. So dope. I think I was like 14 years old and they had this going down. It was like a one hour and a half show or something like that. And they had like different groups. And they were rocking it. And that straight reminded me of that when they did that little like toy soldier format formation. <laughs> Not a photo 
I wonder if that's what I, okay oh now they got the bikes now they got dudes on the bikes okay chilling too like I wonder if that's a real bike club might be an actual real bike club um so if you guys ever remember this looks like I don't know if this is the same set it might it, it would probably depend on where they film this at or you know of course you can always build a set we know that but if you guys remember the first Fast and the Furious, remember when, um, when what's his name? Oh my God, Paul Walker. I can't remember his name. <laughs> Paul Walker picked up Dom after they got after the after they were doing the races, and the cops came. The cops were looking for Dom. He picked him up in his car, and then they ended up in Chinatown. And then the, my man pulled up with the bikes, and before they left, they left. But then two bikes, two or three bikes, came back, shot up the car, and then they left them there. And they say we got to catch a cab or something like that back to the crib. Yeah, they caught a cab back to the crib. That's when he first got introduced to all the all the uh, Fast and Furious members at that time, Dom's family. And um, that looks like the scene from the movie. I'm sure they probably recreated it because if so, then they would have had to have gone to L.A. to do that. Which would have been very interesting, which I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, it's not like I've seen it's not like I've not seen like. What, when Itzy did their joint, I think they were in the UK somewhere, maybe. Um, and I think Twice did a joint. Was it Twice? Twice or Red Velvet did a joint in Vegas, out here in Vegas. So I wouldn't put it past them. Okay, so I like this because I noticed, and that, this, this is what I'm talking about. So when I come back to this, like, I didn't even make me, but the dance choreo while they're wearing the black is different than the dance choreo when they're wearing the red, which is a nice little, like, change up. Like, when you do change ups like that, I got to appreciate that because nobody really wants, you can do, like, not to say the choreo for the first dance sequence, of course, is dope. I almost know it. <laughs> That's how dope it is. But I like change ups, man. I like when nothing's the same in the video. I like it to kind of like switch it up a little bit. That way your mind isn't trained to just one thing. You know what I mean? Songs, dance, art, whatever it is. So I said this before, and I, 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 it was a joke, but I remember saying this before, is that it's something about whether they're Asian, Latino, anything like that. There's always like, I always think, I made a joke one time about, I think it was when I was doing the EXO joint, Obsession. And I said, man, uh-uh, somewhere along the line during the slave times, a, a, a brother and a Korean lady got together and this is the result right here because i've never seen and it and this goes for anything like i said it was a joke so don't take it out. it's just it was just that came into mind i was like they, it's way too much soul in korea it's way too much soul and i'm not talking about soul korea i'm talking about soul period but the funny thing is this as a person who's been in the hip-hop literally since hip-hop was born we as as we say since somebody's been in hip-hop since it was born, there's one thing that I learned, and especially in hip-hop, because I used to be that type of person where I was, like, judge, very judgmental, very critical. Like, you know, oh, you know, like, for instance, in b-boying, because I'm heavy into b-boying. That's, like, out of all the elements in hip-hop, that's my favorite. 
And I have, I know, I have a lot of friends that are either white, Asian, black, Latino, and they're very good at what they do when it comes to b-boying. But I remember like, especially coming from the Bronx, I was always very judgmental. The first time I think I ever seen an Asian b-boy had to be in California. And, that, and it just so happened that those dudes were from Japan Rocksteady. And if you guys know who Rocksteady is, then you would understand what I'm talking about. At that time, I had no idea. And this was like 1991, 92. I had no idea that Rocksteady had been, had branched out that far to where they had a branch in Japan of Rocksteady crew. Like, I had no idea. So when I saw these dudes at Fairfax, saw these dudes at Fairfax High School in Hollywood, this is right off of Melrose. My boy Hex had a, a hip hop shop, and I think there's one still down there, but I don't know if he runs it a hip hop shop over on Melrose and I would go across the street and when I got there, there would be, it was these B-boys, it was like a little festival or something and the B-boys were there doing their thing and found out that these guys were Japan's rock steady. Very dope, I had never, there were moves, and this is 1991, there were moves that they were doing that I had never seen before, like never seen before in California, in New York. It was like, yo, what are these guys doing? And a lot of these moves you see now that these guys, of course, they're very more evolved. But a lot of these moves that you see now, when I saw, I saw back then in 90, like the, what do you call, like the kind of prototype of what you see now, I was seeing back then from this group. And it was like, it was crazy. It was nothing like I had never seen before. But I said, I, I, when I look at groups like this, like NCT, EXO, BTS, and the moves and the things that they do, there was one thing I learned back then is that, you know what? Hip hop is not about the Bronx anymore. Um, music, it's not about who did it. You know, it's, it, 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 you know we say like, oh, you know, well, that's black people's music or this is Asian people's music. But if you listen to certain little like substances within music, whether it's the drums or the melody of the, the string instruments or the melody of the horn instruments, um, whether it's a flute or anything, listen to Indian music, listen to um, African music, listen to Asian music or even Celtic music. I don't know what European is, but listen to Celtic music. If you listen to the drums and some of the other elements within that music, those little substances within that music, you will notice that there are very there are similarities, very small similarities. Some even some even bigger than small similarities between certain music. Like I, I, between African, Indian, and Asian drums, you can almost hear particular similarities, even though they're totally different in how they think. There are certain similarities within that music, and so I learned like, yo, this is not. And I, I remember um, Rakim. Rakim said it best in his joint when he said, it ain't, it ain't where you're from, it's where you're at. And I always said hip hop from now on, you should have hip hop in big letters like this. And right under that, it should say, it ain't where you're from, it's where you're at. Because it's not a New York thing anymore. This is a worldwide, this is a universal thing. I'm a Zulu. So like, we think like that, like universal, like this is world, this is beyond worldwide. This is like, you know, like quasi, like what do you call it? Like the universe, uh, galaxy type shit right here. This is beyond that. And, and I remember K. R. Swan saying something like, yo, hip hop goes beyond human thinking. Like it, be, it goes beyond the, 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 the common, uh, excuse me, the human common way of thinking. Like uh, he didn't say it exactly like that, but basically that's what he was saying. Like it's something that we can't quite put into words when it comes to explaining it. It's just some humanistic thing and maybe even beyond being humanistic to the point of like alien. Who knows? Like we don't know where it comes from, but it's a part of everyone on this planet. And so when you, when I look at this, that's what I said about that joke when I said, oh, you know, black and Korean, that was a joke because to be honest, who knows where these move, when you look at b-boying, for instance, movements have Asian elements in it, they have black elements in it um, uh, and Latino elements in it. Primarily those three elements are in the dancing, even to the point where I dare to say, like again, like the Celtic, uh, Irish, or, or, or what do you call it? Uh, yeah, well, you know what I'm talking about, the Celtic um, type, because I, I, with Celtic music, it's very, it's very detailed, like I like it. I actually like Celtic music. I just like the way it flows. Like when you listen to music in, um, you know, Game of Thrones, some of that music that's being played, like, you know, it's very melodic. It very, some of it very cool, relaxed, yet, yet dark. 
You know what I mean? And so that's why I was talking about that. I'm sorry I talked so much, but I had to stop that real quick because I'm watching these dudes dance and I think about, man, like, you know, I would say like, damn, they, they, they got some brother in them, but that's kind of benign. That's kind of an ignorant way to, to say things. Even though I was joking, I admit that it was a very ignorant statement. And back in the day, I wouldn't have thought of it like that. But now I would think of it like that, because when I look at all the things that I've seen in my life regarding any kind of music, art, dance, anything like that, it's beyond what... Yeah, all right, I like that. I like that. Okay, so we got one more for this particular segment. That's going to be the dance practice, okay? We're gonna do the dance practice. Why do I like to do the dance practices? Because I know I'm going to see things in there that are not shown here because of all the camera angle switches and things like that and scenes that are you know, chopped and put in to make the, you know, the video more appealing. So with the dance practice, I'm gonna get everything. I'm gonna get the meat and the bone with this. So we're gonna go straight into that so y'all know what's going down. Thing, but that joint he did before that. Who is that with the hat? Anyway, who is that with the hat in the front right there? you have to have to do that <laughs> i'd have been in the like yo i need you gotta let me use two arms bro i can't do that with one man My, i got arthritis and carpal tunnel it's not gonna work <laughs> Did, though. 
one thing about this group and others that I've seen, man, that still like those Nikes you got on their tail. <laughs> the um, the musicality with all of their moves, it baffling. I said this before. In a lot of dance, and I, 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 that, that wouldn't be fair. In, in some dance routines I've seen, there was, there's always a four count. Okay, there's always a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that move. And one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, that move, that move. Four counts, eight counts, maybe, maybe a two, maybe. But with a lot of the Korean groups that I've seen, and some of the UK groups, like for instance, Paris Goble, and the, the um, royalty crew that she has, that large group, group of girls and guys and youngsters that they got, they're good at that. There's a musicality that they follow where like every move, there's a one count, a one count, a one count, maybe a two count, and a one count, a one count, a one count, like, and, and everything is on beat, whether it's a symbol, and they take, they take in the very deep, they take into detail every sound within that beat. So, they may do, you know, maybe they're doing like a little flow and then all of a sudden like a symbol comes in. Well, they got to move for that symbol. You know what I mean? So it's like boom, boom, tch, 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 boom, tch. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that is appreciated because you know how much detail will have to go into a routine to put all of that in. Like choreographers have, to me, the most interesting and difficult job. It, that to me, maybe because I'm not a choreographer and so I can't relate. Really, be careful with my mic. Um, I'm not a choreographer, so I can't relate to how, maybe for them it's easy. Like for me, rap is easy. It's easy because I've done it for so long. For a choreographer, maybe it's nothing, but for those on the outside looking in, it could be the most difficult thing because you're like, yo, how do you put all those sequences together? Not only for yourself, because you have to teach the group that, but then having to teach it to them. Like, and I've heard of some of these groups picking it up in a day, like a day. I've heard it was, who was it, Taman used to pick, I think it was Taman from Shiny would pick up a move within hours. And I believe somebody from EXO is like that too. So where they could pick up certain moves within a matter of time. Like, it's like, it's the same. For me, uh uh man, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I have a hard time with the raps, let alone having to do the dance moves. Like, it's the same. <laughs> What they got the four count there. If, even if the movement is four of these, the hand movement is different for each one of those counts in that move. So it just. disappointed not disappointed man nct 127 i got a lot of requests for a lot of nct stuff i believe there's some more stuff on this album that i may look at and i am going to do an album listen i think i don't know if anitra did an album listen for this shit i don't i don't and i love anitra, anitra i love you girl but i can't watch anitra's channel too much i'm on her lives almost all the time but her content is it's hard for me to watch because and 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 she has the same problem with mine because we're both basically music reviewers, video reviewers. And so there's stuff that I've done she hasn't seen yet. So I can't spoil it for her. So she can't look at my content, but we go, she'll come on the live and vice versa. There's a lot of stuff I won't watch unless I've seen it already of hers. And it sucks because I love Anitra's content and, and I always mess with her because I told her, I, take, I like taking clips out of your videos to put in mine as like, you know, uh, what do you call it? As references, you know what I mean? Or expressions, like if I make an expression, I'll use Caitlyn, because Caitlyn has like the best expressions. Of, well, they both do, but Caitlyn likes to sit in the back and she's got like this, how do you say it? Like anime personality. <laughs> Caitlyn has like an anime personality. So I always mess with that. So watching these, man, I gotta be careful um, because I'm going through a lot of stuff and I can't. I, I love you, girl. You know, Monk TV loves Say What Reacts. So anyway, this is it for this segment. Okay, so you guys look out for the live joints, which is what I'm going to do. 
and then put those up on the website. I will attempt to put them on YouTube and if they get blocked, they get blocked and we know what we gotta do after that. And I don't even think it was a full block. I think it was a partial block. So if they block it partially, I'll leave it up there because maybe some of you guys in the other countries can see it. Um, but what hap what'll happen is I'll also upload it into, um, I'll upload it into the website so you guys can see it there, okay? So you know what's going down. Monk in the building, monks in the temple. You know what to do. Subscribe, like, share, comments go below. Let's grow together, share knowledge, and build community. And until my next time, man. I'll see you guys later. Any spot getting plenty props Cause I'm weak Cali any hot Till my body rides And running up I spray them down Like the body shop Finger bangs Just hit with four fingers Like karate chop I'm bragging more than you imagine To the non-factors and sagging Cause we still getting Spelling everything backwards Sometimes I forget lines Like gold-plated actors So I guzzle a 50 act Till I regurgitate